the good news is, despite structural barriers of race and gender, women and girls of color have made real progress in recent years. The number of black women-owned businesses has skyrocketed. Black, black women have ascended the ranks of every industry. Teen pregnancy rates among girls of color are down, while high school and four-year college graduation rates are up. That's good news. But there's no denying that black women and girls still face real and persistent challenges. The unemployment rate is over 8 percent for black women, and they're overrepresented in low-paying jobs, underrepresented in management. They often lack access to economic necessities like paid leave and quality affordable child care. They often don't get the same quality health care that they need and have higher rates of certain chronic diseases, although that's starting to change with Obamacare. It's working, by the way, people, just in case, just in case you needed to know. And then there are some of the challenges that are harder to see and harder to talk about, although Michelle, our outstanding, beautiful First Lady, talks about these struggles. Michelle will tell stories about when she was younger, people telling her she shouldn't aspire to go to the very best universities. And she found herself thinking sometimes, well, maybe they're right. Even after she earned two degrees from some of the best universities in America, she still faced the doubts that were rooted in deep social prejudice and stereotypes. It makes a mockery of our economy when black women make 30 fewer cents for every dollar a white man earns. That adds up to thousands of dollars in missed income that determines whether a family can pay for a home or pay for college for their kids or save for retirement or give their kids a better life. And that's not just a woman's issue, that's everybody's issue. I want Michelle getting paid at some point.